Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, we're taking a look at the next iteration of NVIDIA's DLSS technology, DLSS 3.5, and specifically the new ray reconstruction feature. This tech has been integrated into Cyberpunk 2077's 2.0 update, which launches today ahead of the Phantom Liberty expansion next week. And I've been spending some time with it over the last week or so to see how well DLSS 3.5 works. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Sapphire and the new Nitro Plus and Pure Radeon RX 7800 XT graphics cards. We recently tested the Nitro Plus in our day one review and found it to be excellent, delivering cool thermals coupled with a low operating volume. The Nitro Plus also looks great with its clean silver fan shroud, metal backplate and ARGB light bar which dons the left and right sides of the card, providing some very impressive looking effects that can be controlled via the Trix software. Also included are dual ball bearing fans, quick connect fans, dual BIOS, external ARGB control and more. Then for those of you after that clean white look, the new Pure series has you covered. I mean, how good does this thing look? For more information, please check the link in the video description. So what is ray reconstruction and why is it an important upgrade? Here is my best and quickest explanation. Ray tracing effects in today's games are noisy because running these effects at higher quality levels with less noise and a higher ray count would cripple current graphics cards. To combat and remove this noise, developers implement denoising filters, which do remove this noise, but come with a host of other issues like ghosting, low levels of detail and various inaccuracies. Ray Reconstruction replaces the game's denoiser with a DLSS AI enhanced denoiser that promises greater quality and fewer artifacts than standard denoisers. It achieves this by combining the upscaling and denoising passes into the one algorithm, effectively replacing DLSS Super Resolution with a combined DLSS Ray Reconstruction and Super Resolution algorithm. Like existing DLSS techniques, it requires game engine inputs as seen in this diagram. DLSS 3.5 Ray Reconstruction is trained to not only provide upscaling reconstruction from a lower pixel count image, but ray tracing effect reconstruction as well from a low ray count image. As ray reconstruction replaces the standard super resolution algorithm with the combined version, it must be used with super resolution enabled, but Nvidia believes this will deliver an overall superior image at very little cost of performance relative to playing with traditional denoises and only super resolution. Unfortunately, DLSS 3.5 as a whole is confusingly named. Back when DLSS launched, it referred only to Nvidia's upscaling technology, hence deep learning super sampling. NVIDIA has since changed this to refer to their collection of AI rendering technologies, so what used to be DLSS and DLSS 2.0 is now DLSS Super Resolution. Then with the launch of RTX 40 series GPUs, they've added in frame generation to the DLSS family, and now we're getting ray reconstruction as well. Each of these additions has led to a new DLSS version number, 3.0 for frame gen, 3.5 for ray reconstruction. Staying with us so far? Good, good. On top of this, each DLSS technology has its own version number, so with DLSS 3.5, NVIDIA has added ray reconstruction and updated both super resolution and frame generation to version 3.5. Game developers are free to choose whatever technologies they like. Cyberpunk 2077, for example, has been updated to use DLSS 3.5, but only for the ray reconstruction part. Super resolution is still on version 3.1.1, and frame generation is on 3.1.13. Similarly, there will be games that use DLSS 3.5 Super Resolution, but don't integrate ray reconstruction. Are you still following here? Anyway, to make sure that gamers definitely can't follow all of this, DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction works on all RTX GPUs. But not all of DLSS 3.5 works on all RTX GPUs. Frame generation is still exclusive to RTX 40 series products. Given that Nvidia spent a lot of time marketing DLSS 3 as an upgrade to DLSS 2 that's exclusive to RTX 40 cards, it's a bit weird to now have DLSS 3.5 whose main new feature works on older RTX cards. Don't get me wrong, it's great that ray reconstruction is available to the vast majority of current GeForce owners, but surely there was a better way to name all of this. I'm confident that some RTX 30 series owners, for example, won't understand that their card doesn't support DLSS 3 frame generation, but does support DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction. I'm trying my best here, 
to let you know how all of this works and how the naming scheme is laid out, but yeah, NVIDIA has made it a challenge. Having now tried ray reconstruction in Cyberpunk, it's clear that this is an early technology that's effectively a preview of what is hopefully to come. It's hard to draw too many overarching conclusions from seeing it in just one game, but ray reconstruction does have some pretty big, immediately obvious limitations. It's only trained to be used with DLSS upscaling enabled, not DLAA, so you can't use ray reconstruction and DLAA simultaneously, just like you can't use ray reconstruction without any form of DLSS super resolution. NVIDIA say they are working on training ray reconstruction to be used with DLAA and that will eventually be supported. The bigger limitation though is that ray reconstruction is only available when using Cyberpunk's path tracing mode aka RT overdrive mode. It cannot be enabled when using the game's regular and less taxing ray tracing effects. Nvidia told me this is an intentional restriction at least for now. They focused their efforts to make RT overdrive look great in Cyberpunk 2077 and are working with CD Projekt to add support for ray reconstruction for other RT modes. I suspect this is because the first version of Ray Reconstruction has only been optimized for path traced effects and needs optimization work for regular ray tracing. I don't know this for sure, and NVIDIA do claim DLSS 3.5 has been trained on five times more data than DLSS 3 and recognizes different RT effects. This is a bit disappointing for most RTX GPU owners because the path traced mode in Cyberpunk is pretty punishing on GPU hardware. Unless you have a high end GPU like an RTX 4090 or RTX 4080, it's hard to achieve achieve acceptable performance using RT Overdrive even at relatively low resolutions like 1080p. So while it's nice that DLSS 3.5 does work on lower tier RTX GPUs, practically speaking someone with say an RTX 3060 is not going to be using it, at least for now. That's why it would have been nice to see ray reconstruction available for use with the regular RT effects that are more playable on mid tier GPUs. So how does ray reconstruction impact the visual quality of Cyberpunk 2077's path tracing mode? Well, there's areas that are improved and there are areas that haven't improved. So let's break it all down. For this video, we are using an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4090 on my Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system. And we've set the image quality to 4K ultra settings, path tracing enabled and DLSS quality mode on, no frame generation unless otherwise specified. For ray traced reflections on highly reflective surfaces, ray reconstruction is able to denoise these effects to produce a higher apparent resolution. In scenes such as this, it produces a noticeably higher reflection quality compared to the path traced mode without ray reconstruction and the regular ray tracing mode. The ray reconstructed image is sharper and clearer, both stationary and in motion. It's disappointing this tech isn't available with the regular RT mode as I think it could benefit from it just as much as we are seeing in the path traced mode. Whenever you see surfaces like this in the game, I think the improvement from ray reconstruction is pretty drastic. It takes that blurry, low resolution reflection and significantly enhances it. It's not subtle and it makes ray tracing a more worthwhile effect to enable. Ray reconstruction also improves the temporal accuracy of reflections. The path tracing mode by default clearly uses a temporal denoising filter that works over a long period of time. When you move around and stop while viewing a reflection, it can often take a few seconds for the final reflection to settle into place, with the reflection appearing to move when it shouldn't be. Ray reconstruction significantly shortens that settling period and almost removes this temporal artifact. Reflections are much more responsive, less blurry, stick much closer to the expected outcome with changes in motion, don't move when they shouldn't be, and overall this creates a more accurate image. This brings the ray traced image much closer to the responsiveness of the game's non ray traced screen space reflections. While the screen space reflections are also of a higher apparent resolution at times, they have some pretty significant limitations in motion, like disappearing entirely that you don't get with ray tracing. At times at night, we see a combination of these improvements to reflections, though this isn't always the case. This scene has a higher reflection resolution, reduced reflection ghosting, and reflections that are more responsive to motion when ray reconstruction is enabled. Ray reconstruction also handles the actual denoising part better for some more diffuse reflections. In this example, the regular path traced image has noticeable noise around this reflected light in motion. With ray reconstruction, the reflection is smoother and less noisy, which at least in my opinion makes it less distracting while walking around the city. Not all reflections are enhanced by ray reconstruction though. In this example, we have reflections in transparent glass. Both with and without ray reconstruction enabled, the clarity of reflections is excellent, so for this type of effect, enhanced denoising is not necessary.
It's not just reflections that ray reconstruction improves though. When assessing shadow quality, ray reconstruction produced less noisy shadows in motion in this scene. It's a subtle effect that's not as pronounced as the improvements to reflections, and generally the responsiveness of shadows in motion is a lot better than reflections, but ray reconstruction did appear a bit sharper, as it does in this scene as well. On top of improved noise reduction, ray reconstruction provided more accurate car headlights with reduced smearing, ghosting, and blur. With the normal path traced mode, car headlights lack definition in motion and almost appear like a blob of light at the front of the car, sometimes with light appearing before the actual position of the headlight, an artifact of temporal denoising. With ray reconstruction enabled, the light emitted from the headlight is more defined and less likely to appear before its actual position, improving the accuracy of this effect. Global illumination and ambient occlusion are also improved through ray reconstruction. Ambient occlusion improvements are subtle, though various scenes do look different with ray reconstruction on. I spotted a little more depth to lighting with the feature on, but we're talking about an effect that doesn't necessarily look noticeably better, just different. You could certainly argue over which of these images looks more natural, though it's clear that path tracing is far superior to the regular Psycho RT mode. This scene is one of the weirder ones I found for image quality. Here we have a light panel that illuminates concrete above and below. With all three ray traced modes, the normal RT Psycho mode, RT Overdrive without ray reconstruction, and RT Overdrive with ray reconstruction, it takes a brief moment for the color change of the light to impact the global illumination scene here. Ray reconstruction doesn't solve this delay, there's still an unnatural disconnect. However, when the colors do change, Without ray reconstruction, you get this ugly transition between colors that's especially noticeable around the moving pedestrians. It's this weird color ghosting effect, and it happens with every color. With ray reconstruction, some color transitions occur instantly without this ugly ghosting, like purple to yellow or blue to purple. Other colors see some but reduced ghosting, like yellow to green. Quite a bizarre discovery, this sort of effect needs work across all modes, but it does look best with ray reconstruction enabled. For those wondering, you don't really get a global illumination effect here at all when ray tracing is disabled, so the RT modes, despite this artifact, do look better. Unfortunately, ray reconstruction doesn't always look better when it's enabled. This technology really struggles with some specific types of reflections, especially when it's a semi-reflective, not as shiny surface with texturing. Take this scene for example, which has this marbled concrete tiling on the ground. The path traced mode without ray reconstruction produces a clearly higher resolution and more defined reflection. It's a stark difference too, to the point where I was sure I was getting the settings messed up, but nope, I've triple checked and this is indeed labeled correctly. When we add motion to the mix, the ray reconstructed image also has worse ghosting and stability. It seems to be the case where the ray reconstruction algorithm isn't quite sure whether what we're seeing is a reflection or not, and it ends up handling both the reflection and the texture applied to this surface rather poorly. Here's another example of this effect. In this example, the non-ray reconstructed image is more defined but noisier, an indication the traditional denoiser is being used. The ray reconstructed image is blurrier but has virtually no noise. When we zoom into the window, we can see that we are indeed looking at the right images, as the ray reconstructed image has more defined reflections for this shiny glass surface, like we saw way back at the start of these comparisons. What complicates this is that the higher definition seen in the traditionally denoised image likely isn't accurate either. When we show a static image, the two denoising techniques are much closer together, though the non-ray reconstructed image is still superior and better preserves the ground textures. These are what the textures look like without ray tracing. You can see the ray reconstructed image definitely reduces the detail present here in an attempt to denoise the reflection. Whereas that detail is better preserved without ray reconstruction. But then in motion, the regular denoiser is quite noisy, while the ray reconstructed image is still quite blurry. I suspect the real expected presentation in motion is supposed to be between where the regular and DLSS 3.5 images end up. And finally, here is perhaps the clearest example of the strengths and weaknesses of these types of reflections. When we start further away from this glassy surface, ray reconstruction is able to produce a better quality reflection. When walking towards the surface, after a certain point, a texture loads in across the glass, it's smudgy, has a lot of scratches and stuff. 
After this point, the non-ray reconstructed image better preserves this texture and produces a higher detail image. Also, here's a quick look at how switching the DLSS level from quality down to performance affects ray reconstruction. As expected, with a lower render resolution, not only does the general image quality get worse, but so does the sharpness and clarity of ray traced effects. Still, even with DLSS performance being used, we still get most of the benefits of ray reconstruction, so reflection quality as one example doesn't become worse than not using ray reconstruction. It still ends up looking better despite the lower render resolution. As for performance, it's really not a lot to say here. When testing using the GeForce RTX 4090 across multiple resolutions and DLSS quality modes, ray reconstruction has very little impact to frame rate, whether it's enabled or disabled. On the 4090, having the setting off was slightly faster in the area we tested, but even then we're talking about up to a 4% difference, with the typical margin being more like 1%, which is effectively margin of error type stuff. Given that it generally provides superior image quality, it's nice to see this setting has little impact to performance. This is also true when looking at the setting across a range of GPUs. Here we have four models tested at 1440p using the DLSS quality mode. While the RTX 4090 was slightly faster without ray reconstruction, the other models were all slightly faster with ray reconstruction enabled. Best case, we saw a 7% win for ray reconstruction with the RTX 4070. By the time we got to the RTX 3070 though, this card is simply too slow for path tracing at 1440p, so performance is largely identical either way. There's a bit of stuttering here, clearly some VRAM issues. At 1080p, again, most of these lower tier cards really aren't capable of path tracing, though generally the ray reconstruction mode is slightly faster. It's not an earth shattering margin, we typically call this a tie, which is a good result for better image quality on the whole. Overall, I've been reasonably impressed with this first look at DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction in Cyberpunk 2077's 2.0 update. With no impact to performance, ray reconstruction typically improves image quality for ray traced effects in a number of ways. Higher fidelity reflections and shadows, less noisy image in motion, a more responsive image in motion with a much shorter settling time for effects, reduced ghosting, and improved accuracy for lighting resulting in greater image definition. For the most part, this resolves several really big issues I've had with ray tracing over the years. In many games, when you enable ray traced effects, yes, we get more impressive reflections, for example, that look more accurate and work properly in more situations, but this has often come at a cost of a lower effect resolution, a more grainy image, more artifacts, and less temporal responsiveness. Sometimes ray traced effects will boil, sizzle, and move even when there's no actual motion on screen, a byproduct of extremely low ray counts and weak denoises. There's times I haven't wanted to play with ray tracing on because these issues are so noticeable and annoying and they really don't justify the huge performance hit. Ray reconstruction is a step towards fixing these problems, making ray tracing much more usable. I'm much more likely to enable ray tracing in a game when the image quality is genuinely very impressive, when there's not very many artifacts or issues, and when the performance hit is justified visually. This technology seems like a suitable way to reduce artifacts and improve ray tracing quality without needing to increase ray counts and make the performance hit even larger. I'm also hopeful that ray reconstruction will encourage developers to use more intensive ray tracing effects because the resulting quality will actually justify the performance cost. It's clear that some devs are very conservative with ray tracing to the point where the visual difference is negligible with it on, all because they don't want to cause a massive hit to performance. Ray reconstruction doesn't reduce the performance hit from enabling high quality RT effects, but it makes them easier to justify including because the final image quality is much more acceptable than it otherwise would be. However, ray reconstruction clearly still has some issues, and NVIDIA have a long way to go before this feature is a slam dunk win for improving ray tracing. In several areas, I saw ray reconstruction reduce image quality. It seems to really struggle with some types of reflections on textured surfaces. This isn't something you'll see all the time. It's highly dependent on the surface, lighting, location, time of day, and so on, but it was obvious at times across many hours testing Cyberpunk. If I had to put some numbers to it, I'd guess that ray reconstruction improves image quality about 60% of the time, around 20% of the time there is no impact, and about 20% of the time we see a regression. However, NVIDIA do have a proven track record of improving DLSS quality over time through updates. We've seen that now with super resolution and frame generation. NVIDIA also acknowledged that there are certain scenarios where ray reconstruction would benefit from additional AI training, so I'll be keeping an eye out for improvements over time. It seems they are well aware of these problems.
What also leads me to believe that this is a very early, perhaps even rushed implementation, is that ray reconstruction is not available for the regular ray tracing modes when they would clearly benefit from superior denoising and greater image quality. Having it working with the most intensive path traced mode is nice, but the majority of RTX owners don't have the GPU power for path tracing. It's barely viable on an RTX 4070 or RTX 3080, the latter of which doesn't even have the crutch of frame generation. Once we get to GeForce models priced at $500 or less, or indeed the entire Turing generation, at best you'll be using the normal ray traced modes, which currently aren't compatible with ray reconstruction. Nvidia and CD Projekt really need to get the feature working with regular ray tracing so the majority of GeForce owners can benefit, and so that DLSS 3.5 can truly live up to its compatibility across all RTX GPUs, because right now, that's really just on paper support. In addition, supporting DLAA would be nice, although DLAA with path tracing is pretty crippling, even on an RTX 4090. It's important to reiterate that this is testing with just one title right now. DLSS 3.5 ray reconstruction replaces the ray tracing denoiser in the game, so the benefit over standard image quality will vary depending on how good the game's traditional denoiser is. It's possible that games with really excellent denoisers will benefit less from ray reconstruction while those with garbage denoises or poor implementations will benefit more. Over time we'll get a much better idea of the general impact in games, although this initial look was reasonably impressive, and I'm yet to see many or any examples of games with superior ray tracing effect quality than what DLSS 3.5 is providing in Cyberpunk. Lastly, at this stage ray reconstruction is not a selling point to purchase a GeForce GPU. Game support, even in upcoming titles that Nvidia have mentioned up to this point, is very limited right now, and NVIDIA have plenty to work on to improve the feature. Even on existing GeForce RTX GPUs in Cyberpunk 2077, you might not even be using ray reconstruction because it is only available with a very intensive path tracing mode. But AMD and Intel should be working on a competing technology right now anyway, because neither company would want to fall behind in ray tracing image quality over time if ray reconstruction takes a hold across a large number of games. AMD in particular shouldn't want to be the brand where not only does ray tracing perform worse on their products, but looks worse as well. Anyway, that's it for this look at DLSS 3.5 Ray Reconstruction in Cyberpunk 2077's 2.0 update. This update now should be available for everyone to test out for themselves, so if you do have a GeForce GPU, you should be able to go into the game right now, enable path tracing and ray reconstruction, and see what it looks like. I am very keen to see how it improves over time, as we do know that NVIDIA likes to improve these features, and I think, yeah, if it's improving ray tracing and it's improving the quality of ray tracing, then that's just going to make RTFX much more viable in games, something that we have been critical of in the past, the sort of performance to visual ratio. Something like this hopefully will be improving that as time goes on. And just briefly as well, Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 with path tracing enabled is a very visually impressive game. Just revisiting the game in general, it's been a while since I played it with the, I think I played it at the initial launch of the title several years ago. The game is really a stunning title and it is well worth using with the ray tracing effects enabled, whether that is the path tracing mode or the non-path tracing mode. Great looking game, kudos to CD Projekt and the Cyberpunk team on making this one of the best looking PC titles still in 2023. So yeah, very, very impressed with what I was seeing in this game throughout these updates. And of course the upcoming Phantom Liberty expansion as well, which we can't show you any footage of just yet. So yeah, that's it for this one. If you do want to support our independent testing, reviews, and analysis like this, then please do consider supporting us via our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You can access to some cool benefits like our upcoming monthly live stream. That should be happening very soon. We've also got our Discord community, BTS videos, lots of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.